Hello, everybody. Today is Monday, February 5th. Ron, it was a crazy week last week. We're back here for our Monday morning meeting. It was a crazy week last week, you know, whipsawed by the Fed and, and the like. But when Meta came out, blew it out, Amazon came and blew it out. Equities just by and large absolutely ripped off of this post-Fed low. Bring up my screen here so you can see that. Here's that post-FOMC low. S&P just ripped, Q's ripped. Your trading idea this week is about Meta. That was up, what, 17-ish percent. 20, you know, what's your quick takeaway on what happened last week before we dig in? I mean, so much happened. You know, we usually focus on the AI, stock side here. but AI fever, see. man. AI fever. They don't care what rates do. They just want to buy tech stocks. If you yeah. look at it, all the earnings growth is coming out of tech stocks, those big names. That's that's what everyone wants, right? The right. market participation is becoming so narrow. Those are the names they want. And it's being driven on AI fever, right? And at some point, that bubble is going to pop, but it's very hard to call the top in a bubble, right? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you there. It's look, it, it's sort of like you said, doesn't really matter anything else that happens. And people go, oh, there's a war this weekend or there's this or that. And and right now it just doesn't care. And then when you get these earnings that are pretty strong and you get, I don't know, like the jobs data was pretty strange. There's a lot of other data that just all sort of, it all seems to <laughs> summarize as stocks higher. It doesn't really matter what else. And so, you know, to your point, the, the mag sevens are doing very well. Some of this other stuff is getting left left behind. The one sector I wanted to flag that is breaking out and was a pretty interesting chart is the industrials here. Did, did these ever come across your radar? Not overly, no. Yeah. I, I've got a few sectors that I home in on, but that's not really one of them. Yeah, I, I tend to not cover these either, but you know, flipping through the charts, you know, the, the story is indeed, you know, these mag sevens and, and the AI strength is so good. But this is the one chart that I that I also caught on to that was really pretty interesting. And and I think that you know, it doesn't give off that same overbought appearance as some of the, you know, other sectors that are just really kind of going crazy lately, like SMH. I mean, these are up, what, 20, I think 10%, excuse me, for since the start of the year. So really pretty incredible moves here. AMD was the name that came up last week, right? And that was an interesting. Yeah, uh, so we got the dip in AMD, but it lasted two days. <laughs> <laughs> so you had recommended by puts last week. Um, puts, and um, Put spread collars. Mm -hmm. to hedge your longs if you've got any or put condors if you weren't comfortable selling calls or whatever but yeah that's right yeah and and like you said it it really moved rather violently down after earnings and you know if you were fortunate enough to monetize it there it looked pretty good but because it was a put spread collar you're not feeling too much pain if you held on to it a little bit longer and then we'll see what this week you know obviously brings up here there the trade that i felt that you know i had a, a fair amount of conviction on was buying S&P straddles. And this was also an interesting one. They were 60 bucks into the FOMC. And we had about 70 points of downside movement, maybe 60 points, depending on where you strike it, 50 to 60. And then we closed exactly at 4960, which is 60 points over that 4900 area. So there was a ton of volatility after the mm -hmm. FOMC. And you know, if you're a Delta hedger, you were probably pretty happy with the $60 straddle. If you just kind of bought and held, then you know, it seems like you kind of more or less broke even there, but indeed, you know, a lot, a lot of volatility into the end of the day. So we'll flip back to your idea for this week and it's meta. Why don't you walk us through that one? Well, you can see like the most stretched names on meta and Amazon because they had such blowout moves, yeah. right? But so, so the, obviously the overbought, oversold part of this is, is looking at Bollinger Bands. So you can see on the chart that Meta's just knocked it out of the park and way above the Bollinger Bands. So the idea is just that playing a little bit of mean reversion in meta over the next couple of weeks, given yeah. it's had this sort of gap. Generally, these sort of gaps often need to kind of have some consolidation. So looking at the stock, I did a bit of a fib, fib retracement level analysis. I think 440 is, is probably like a reasonable target for a consolidation. So it's still that's still materially higher than where it was pre-earnings. But mm -hmm. I think a little pullback down to 440 is playable over the next couple of weeks and then you can use put spreads to play that what well, yeah what are your gamma what are your gamma pockets saying for where the levels are yeah so interesting you say at 440 because there's a huge strike there and i would say that that would be a reasonable low and the reason i say is because these gamma bands here these orange and blue bars they they the lines excuse me they flatten out below there which which suggests that from a extreme perspective dealer hedging should start to really lighten up down there so if 
we do get some options driven momentum, the downside or momentum in general, dealer participation is really weighing there. And to the upside, we have 480 and 500 as major levels. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't really sell calls into this because vol implied vol is sitting on the lows, right? Mm -hmm. It dropped by 10 vols post earnings as, as it should do, but it's sitting on the lows. So I wouldn't really want to sell vol. But then even buying vol by doing a put spread, you just cheapen up your theta bill a little bit and kind of, I'm not playing for a massive crash in the stock. It's just more retracement on digestion of the gap that it's had. So mm -hmm. that's why a put spread would be appropriate in terms of the structure. And you get quite good leverage. So for a 460, 440 put spread to Feb, which is two weeks out, you you pay 380 for that. So you're getting oh, like man. better than four to one profit versus loss ratio. It's not bad. Yeah. And I and I think that makes sense buying that put spread. Because I if we were closer to 500, which is admittedly way higher in this, then, then I think that that would be a better resistance level. But I don't put it past this market to try to re-squeeze this thing this week. I mean, it should, that's just been the the trend, right? Like squeeze this stuff to death. And so those upside moves can be way more jumpy than we expect right now. And if you're not selling really rich implied ball, like you mentioned, then, you know, why not go for the put spread where the payoff seems will be a little bit better. Yeah. Contain your risk a bit. Yeah. And I, I, in turn, I didn't catch anything that was obvious to me on the single stock side, but what we wrote about in our, in our note this morning was that single stock or excuse me, index implied ball was up. So fixed strike balls up, even though the S&P rallied pretty sharply last week, mm -hmm. even into Friday. And so I really like selling upside calls actually in the S&P here, short dated calls. I'll just flip over to our note this morning because I have some screenshots in there that'll really help drive this home. So if you look here, we show that fixed strike vol was up in the S&P into Friday. We had these huge gamma levels at 495, particularly in spiders. And then the 500 level and 5,000 level, the X 500 level in spiders is really gaining in size and so i think that some of the vol that was really you know trying to express or catch that upside bid in the s p is going to start to cool off quite a bit we had again people buying these calls trying to to, to catch this upside after powell and after these big earnings and i and i think that these balls up here are really going to start to cool off so i like leaning against this you know five thousand strike into feb opex just because I think that's going to be a really sticky zone, not only because of the options positioning, I think the ball's a little rich, but also, you know, that, those big round numbers tend to attract a lot of attention. And and I expect, suspect that CNBC will be flashing a bunch of lights and we'll hang so around that level. If we I've, get there. I've got a question on that, actually. So, yeah, please. so the, the theory or the thesis as to that being a sticky zone, is that based on the idea that dealers are likely long that area? Yeah, so I, I think that dealers are likely long that 5,000 area. I think that's been a strike that people have been selling upside calls at. And I think that you get a lot of short dated flow that was trying to catch momentum to the upside now. And then when we move into that area, the zero DTE positions and one DTE shorter D, you know, data positions will come in and start to fill in around that area. And that's what starts to create that the stickiness. stickiness. So, okay. Yeah. yeah so, like, yeah. I'm okay. sorry. So the stickiness it, comes from the idea that in that zone, you're going to pick up a load of gamma supply, but it'll be very short dated gamma supply. It, it, that's exactly right. And I, and I think you can see it, you can see these bars change on a daily basis here. You know, when you look at these notes and you can see how much positioning comes in into short dated expirations, right? So, you know, I, for example, I don't have any positions on today, right? In, in the S and P particularly, particularly see this in the spiders, but you know, I don't have any positions on today, but as soon as we rally just a little bit, I'm going to start selling you know, various calls. So if you look at this 495 strike, for example, there was no gamma there, not just because the market was so much lower, but there just wasn't a whole lot of positions there. So as mm -hmm. the S&P moves up, people go, I'm going to sell tomorrow's calls or today's calls or next week's calls. You can really see those positions start to fill in mm -hmm. around the at the money. And I think that that means that volatility will start to, you mm -hmm. know, retract. And and to lean against this 5,000 level, again, it's such a psychological level. And you see that number that I, that I do think we'll yeah. see. Yeah, I don't, disagree. I don't disagree that the super short dated fresh flow comes on the sell side. But I just think on the way up there over the last week or two, as we've seen fixed strike vol catch a bid, that has been in indicative of the idea that dealers are actually not long up there on the sort of one month to three month bucket. Yeah. Of security. And like, for example, Nomura look at this stuff and they have, I don't know, they have their own information based on the flows that they see. Right. And they think it's the opposite of normal. 
So normally where dealers right. are long the upside, short the downside, they think it's the opposite way around right now, where dealers are short the 5,000 area mm -hmm. and long the 4,800 area because people have not had the market and needed the opposite hedging. They've needed call hedges and they've been happy to sell puts. So that's quite interesting because I'd say the fixed right vol price action kind of confirms what they're saying yes. more than what we would normally see. But I also, but then you've got Goldman's out there saying that <laughs> short dated gamma explodes and is very local. So plus or minus 2%, it disappears. And the only way that is true is if all the gamma supply is super short dated, one week or shorter dated stuff, yep. which, I, which echoes what you're saying, that, that, that that's going to fill in. So I, I agree it's going to fill in. But it kind, of, it kind of feels like on the way up here, dealers are, are behaving a bit short. That maybe is what's driving us up here to some extent. Yeah. And then, and then if that gamma supply comes in, yes, we could sit there at that 5,000 level. But if there's a macro if there's a macro reason for the market to move, that, that local gamma that the street gets given is very local, like 2% yes. away, 2% up or down, it goes away, basically. It, right, it, go, it, it goes away, but generally we don't see those major even to the downside we don't see typically more than one percent moves like we got a little bit last week to the yeah, downside yeah. and then we recover and move one percent the upside yeah, yeah. and when 50 percent of volume is zero dte you know <laughs> that just tells you that everything is so you know concentrated in the short term meaning that okay yeah. most of the volume is zero dt but most of the open interest tends to start suddenly particularly spiders show up in you know tomorrow's expiration two days expiration etc so mm -hmm. uh, those models like you pointed out are all vastly different and, you know, I think there's a lot of conflicting signals there, meaning, okay, there is this big, long dated call bid and you see fixed strike fall go up as the market goes up, which to me, and you had wrote a tweet about this as well, but to me, that's telling me that, okay, balls going up as the market's going up means that there's a supply issue there, right? There's a big demand for those calls. So the market's going to likely go up, but you read a lot of those notes, like the Nomura notes and say, like, look, there's a lot of people buying long calls, but then the other issues that we have this, you know, systematic derivative ETFs where we're all selling upside calls like the JP Morgan collar trade and JP and all these ones. So there's this real shifting confluence. And I think you have to vary, like you mentioned, it's, it's localized where that, where those pockets of gamma are. And what's the, what's the trade though? Like to me, to me, that speaks to the idea that if you are bullish, you should be long call calendars. Mm -hmm. so you, you should basically be, long vega and not so long gamma basically right because the gamma the gamma that keeps getting given to the street is going to make it very hard to dig, to get a move bigger than one or two percent on any given day but the implied vol will get will, will hold up on the rally and won't reset materially lower on like one to two month options because the street just doesn't own them yeah well i mean to your point look at the vix over this last period right like it, we're we're holding up after FOMC, you would expect it to come down all stuff. And, and we're not, yeah. you know, the, the market had it's moved higher. Vols moved higher a little bit. And I think that, I, I think that once you get these big moves, like we've had this big move, we can play kind of that pinning type flow now on the feeling like we can kind of predict that these positions are going to fill in here. But I honestly think that the way to play it is look, if you want to be long, you got to be long single stock, you know, I, I would just say vol kind of in general and, you know, pick, you got to pick your, pick your instrument. Well, like the S and P is going to get dragged higher if the mag sevens and all that kind of go up. So that's another kind of, you know, there's that almost like reverse beta kind of component where it's like, Hey, the S and P is going to rally because, you know, meta just went up 15% and Apple or Amazon went up 8% and whatever it may be. So, you know, it, to your point, it's a, it's a, it's a choppiness, but, but ultimately, I don't think you just catch extended bids in the S and P just like you would see an extended bid in, in the AI stocks, right? Where we just keep running and it doesn't stop and it doesn't make sense anymore. Here you kind of get these jumps positions fill in S and P jumps again, positions fill back in and, and you kind of get that type of a cadence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then on last chart here, I just want to bring up the correlation. You've talked about this a lot into earnings and this is the lows of correlation. This, and this goes back, this is the SIBO core one M index. You know, this is at the lows, obviously, going back many, many years. You had pointed out and, and makes total sense that in earnings, this metric correlation just in general gets to be at lows. 
I mean, do you make anything of this starting to lift up a little bit on this that, topic of S and P vol versus single stock vol? Yeah, but that's just that's just the earnings vol reset, yeah. right? So as single stock vol goes down, then that number is going to go back up because the index vol stays where it is, and the single stocks all drift back down by five to ten vols. So that 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 correlation jump is completely to be expected. I think I think if you look at that number, but you look at it on three month or six month, there's probably a little bit more. It's less noisy. And there's going to be less of that vol reset element to it. So, have, have they what what durations have they got that for? Yes, yeah, so that's that, that was one month. This is three months. Three months yeah, so the longer dated stuff is sitting even closer to the lows, right? Like it's not even bouncing because there's no there's no real three month vol reset. There's a one month vol reset because the one month gamma catches the bid for earnings, but three right. month vol doesn't. So it's not going to reset. Therefore, it's not going to have the bounce. Yeah, I think that's a ridiculous metric in terms of where it's trading. And it's basically a testament to way too much money chasing that same trade, that dispersion trade. And apparently there's a ridiculous number of hedge funds who've got this trade on. And for me, it's a disaster waiting to happen. I think at some point, something's going to make the index move. It's going to be something we're not expecting. And all these guys who've got this dispersion trade on that they've made amazing money on correlation going from 50 to 20 are just going to suddenly see correlation back at 40, 50 and their book's going to have a nice big hole in it. Yeah, I, I agree with you. But I mean, the issue is like we have these, we have a lot of put selling. That seems to be the fact like VIX, VIX strike vol when the market went down last week in the FOMC, the VIX went up a little bit. VIX strike vol did nothing. If anything, it got sold, which told us that people sold puts as soon as any weakness showed up. So, you know, that downside is, is being sold. And then there are these signals that show that upside calls in the SP is being bought, right? And so the, the reason I bring this up is if correlation spikes or something triggers that spike, there's all these short puts that have to get covered. And then people would have to get long ball to, to hedge any downside risk. Like if you talk about real estate having credit issues or something, credit issues is a huge source of long put demand, you know, something like that. And it's also interesting that the last time we got these levels of correlation in this longer dated metric, I hadn't looked at this before, but this is February 2017, which is the lowest level of implied vol. I think we realized a three, three and a half in October in one month S&P implied vol. And so, you know, this is Volmageddon right here, right? The explosion and kind of reset there. And so, you know. Yeah, so I would say that when the correlation is at this ridiculously low level, it makes it almost impossible for index vol to go down in mm -hmm. a rally, basically, right? Index vol can go down if we literally just don't move and we realize five and we just can't get away from this area. But if we keep rallying in spot, because because implied correlation is already so low, what happens is that the way the, way the skew works on index versus singles is that the implied correlation price at higher strikes is lower. So the only way that implied correlation doesn't go from 20 to 10 in a rally is if index vol resets higher on that rally mm. so that it just stays still. And that's what we've seen for the last rally. So from the rally from 4,800 to 4,950, we've seen exactly that, right? If you had looked at all the 4,950 strike, if you'd look at the 3% higher strikes on singles and index two weeks ago, you would have seen that the implied correlation that they were all being priced at on the higher strikes was lower than 20%. But when we went there, it reset higher because it wasn't allowed to go below 20 because this is like a 20, 20 year low, basically. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's it's kind of it's technical in the way that so on the sell off, you it should ride up the correlation skew and it should go from 20 to 30. But if if put sellers come in, they smash it back down, it just stays around 20. Mm -hmm. So it's like correlation is floating around 20. And the way that's manifesting is an index vol bid on a rally and an index vol offer on a sell-off, basically. Right. So it's almost like the gamma positioning where you say, hey, look, people are more long calls and short puts than the historical assumptions of, you know, the other the other way around, traders being short calls and long puts. Yeah, it's a bit it's a bit like that, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. All right, so some fascinating stuff, Imran. We'll wrap it up there. Again, meta, your put spread there. You can see it on the screen, February 460, 440s. I like that. And then as for me, I like selling some of these S&P upside calls into kind of leaning on that 5,000 level into Feb OpEx. Uh, so great information there, Imran. How can people get a hold of you? Sure. So on X, I'm options underscore insight. We stick stuff then every day, a few times a day, whatever. And then come and check out our website. We've got a free blog where we kind of talk you through the week's insights that we've had throughout all our various products. 
so yeah this is the all the information is there on the website come check us out awesome thanks so much and i'm at spot game on twitter and excuse me x and you can also get a free seven day trial of our products at spotgamer.com and emron we'll see you next week see you mate bye